No, you're keeping us awake. I am not. You are too. <laughs> you think you're Jack Dempsey, do ya? And you're looking for another sandwich. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They're fighting and I won't get any sleep all night. Oh my goodness. Pipe down, all of ya. Now go back to sleep. It's all right, Molly. Annie's here. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, get up. I said get up. Yes, Miss Hannigan. What do you say? What do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Right, Lord. I am not an orphan. Uh, My mother and father left a note saying they loved me, and they were coming back for me. That was 1922. This is 1933. <laughs> Maybe they got stuck in traffic. <laughs>
Get her out of there. Get her out. You. Your days are numbered. All right. Breakfast. Hot mush. No, you're not getting hot mush. Yay! You're getting cold mush. <laughs>
pound and they put him to sleep. You understand? Yes, officer. On a proper leash and with a license. All right, now run along with you before you catch a death of a cold in this weather. I don't like the weather. Yeah. 
so much, Alpha <laughs> Well, it's all in the line of duty. <laughs> and uh, you, don't let me ever hear you running away again from this nice lady. Oh, she's not. Oh, good evening. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> now listen, I'm going to have your head for this. The next time you walk out the doors, it's going to be 1953. Well, you're glad to be back. Well? Yes, Miss Hannigan! Liar. That's the one thing I always taught you. Never tell a lie! Well, what's the one thing I always taught you? Never tell a lie, Miss Hannigan! For what you've done, I could have got fired. And the board of hell sticking their noses in down here! We're gonna pay for it. Just sit and stay. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan? Yeah? Oh, good. I'm Jane Sparrow. So? <laughs> and the New York City Board of Orphans suggests oh, that I... Oh, no, 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 see, no. Now, listen, it wasn't my fault. It was Annie. She got in by the laundry cart. And I know I should have called Mr. Donatelli instead of the cops, but I just didn't know Ms. what to do. Miss Hannigan, I'm sorry, but I have the slightest idea what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get it now, Hold it, sister. <laughs> if it's beauty products you're peddling, I don't need any. <laughs> so get out. Miss Hannigan, I'm not peddling anything. I'm private secretary to Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks? The Oliver Warbucks. Oh! Here, <laughs> here. Nice hat. <laughs> oh, I read in Mr. Winchell's column that Oliver Warbucks is the world's richest unmarried man. I wouldn't know. I don't read of Mr. Winchell. Miss Hannigan, Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays at his home. An orphan? Yes, an orphan. Oh, I mean, wouldn't you rather have a lady? <laughs> I got two weeks coming. It's a joke. What kind of orphan did he have in mind? Well, she should be friendly. And intelligent. Mississippi! Capital M I double S I double S I double P I Mississippi! And cheerful. <laughs>
take your coat. Will I get it back? Of course, dear. Gee, I really love my new coat, Miss Farrell. I'm glad, dear. Now, what would you like to do first? Uh, the floors. I'll scrub them. And then I'll get to the windows. And then you won't have to do any cleaning while you're here. Hey, what? Of course not. You are a guest. Tonight I have hours of paperwork to get through. Wonderful. 
And Grace, I'll need you for dictation. Yes, sir. All right, good to see you all again. Great, this is Mr. Staff. Yes, sir. Grace, if you'll get your notebook, and what is that? <laughs> this is Eddie, sir. The orphan who will be staying with us for the Christmas holidays. The orphan? But that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphan. So I chose a girl. <laughs> I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? Any what? Sir? What's your last name, child? Ho! Oh, I'm just Annie, sir. Mr. Warbucks. I haven't got any last name. That I know of. So you're just Annie, huh? Just Annie. I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd want to meet Babe Ruth. Oh boy, sure! Who's Babe Ruth? <laughs> I couldn't be happier that you'll be spending Christmas with us. Grace, we'll start with the figures from the iron ore shipments from Toledo to Chicago. Uh, what are we supposed to do with this child? It is her first night here, sir. It is? Well, Annie, your first night here, I suppose we ought to do something nice for you. Why don't you sit down? <laughs> A movie! Would you like to go to the movie? Gosh, sure, Mr. Warbucks. I mean, I've heard a lot about them, but I've never been to one. Never? No, sir. Well, we should do something about that right away. Nothing but the best for you, Annie. <laughs> You'll go to the Roxy, and an ice cream soda at Rumblemeyer's, and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Golly! Grace, forget about the dictation tonight. We'll do it first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Instead, you take Annie to the movie. <laughs> yes, sir. Aw, oh, gee. Something the matter, Annie? Nothing, sir. It's just, aw, oh, gee. <laughs> no, what is it, child? You don't want to go to the Roxy? No, I want to. It's just that, well, I thought you were going to take me. <laughs> <laughs> Me? I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight oh, to... Gee. Uh, you see, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks, making an inspection tour of my factories, or what's left of my factories with this damn depression. And when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation, that oh. is... That's okay. I understand, Mr. Warbucks. Excuse me, sir. Bernard Baruch calling? Good. <clears throat> Hello, Barney. Yes, I got in about an hour ago. No, Detroit and Chicago. Barney, I did not like what I saw out there. Factories shut down. My factory shut down. You're down. You're darn too. <laughs> if I'm not making money, no one is. And God, shh, darn it, Barney. <laughs> Your pal Roosevelt has got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with some new plan, some new approach. New something. Yes, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being too. <laughs> yes, I'll go over with you. Good. Come over here tonight. Yeah, I can show you the... Go. Barney, make it tomorrow. Tonight, tonight I've got a date to go to the movies with a 10-year-old girl. 11! She's 11, I was mistaken. Uh -huh. Bye, Barney. <laughs> Drake? Yes, sir. Coats? Yes, sir. Grace, you'll come too, of course. Yes, sir. Will you be watching the Duesenberg or the Bentley? 
and the Duesenberg. Wise choice, sir. No. Wait. This child's been cooped up in an orphanage. No Duesenberg. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Sure. Why not? It's only 45 blocks. Yes, sir. Fifth Avenue bus fumes. There's no air like the air of New York. You don't realize how much you miss the whole damn city until you've been away from it. Like the man says, after New York, every place else is Foxborough.
CBS Radio brings you Ma Perkins. Ma's daughter Fetty is going to marry Carl Michaels. On Friday, <coughs> Carl went back to Chicago. Don't go to Chicago, Carl. But no sooner had Carl left town than Dr. Andrew knocked on the door. Yeah? Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Uh, uh, oh, Pharaoh! Only <coughs> one week, huh? What's the matter, Warbucks tied Annie already? <laughs> oh no, on the contrary, Mr. Warbucks is delighted with Annie, and Annie is having the time of her life. How oh, nice. Annie and Mr. Warbucks are practically inseparable. They go everywhere together, to the rock seas, the stock exchange, and guess where they had lunch yesterday? The Waldorf? The Automat. The Automat. Yes, and she just loves her new coat. She never takes it off. Never, Miss Never. Never. Now, Miss Hannigan, I know. That's mine. <laughs> Miss Hannigan, I know you're busy, but this needs to be signed and sent back to Mr. Donatelli by no later than 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. What for? Well, Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie that, guess what? What? He wants to adopt her. <laughs> adopted by Warbucks. She's going to be the daughter of a millionaire. Oh, no, no, no. The daughter of a billionaire. A billionaire. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mr. Warbucks wanted me to drop by in person to tell you that Annie will not be coming back here. Ever. Get there by playing from the 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, and Mr. President, I'll grant you that Barney Baruch and I are not exactly standing on red lines yet. But I'm telling you, Mr. President, you've got to do something and do it damn fast. All right, I'll talk to you about it on... Friday. All right, Friday at the White House. Goodbye. And Mr. President, how about you and I bury the hatchet? And you and Mrs. Roosevelt come here for supper, Christmas Eve, on your way to Hyde Park. Good. I'm delighted. Goodbye, Mr. President. If I thought he was going to say yes, I never would have asked. Grace, <laughs> call Al Smith and find out what Democrats eat. Yes, sir. <laughs> the box from Tiffany's? Arrived this morning, sir. Fine. I'm going to give this thing to her and then tell her I want to adopt her. Where is Annie? Upstairs in her room, sir, writing another letter to her friends at the orphanage. I'll have Drake call her now. Fine. Damn! You don't have to be nervous, sir. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. You're damn right she is. And I'm not nervous. And get her down here. Yes, sir. Drake, Mr. Warbucks will see Annie now. Miss Annie, Mr. Warbucks will see you now. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Hello. Oh, good morning, Annie. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, how are you, sir? I'm fine. 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 Annie, I think the time has come for the two of us to have a very serious discussion. You're sending me back to the orphanage, right? Annie, can the two of us have a man to man talk? Sure. <laughs> I was born into a very poor family in what they call Hell's Kitchen, right here in New York. Both of my parents died before I was 10. So I made myself a promise. Someday, one way or another, I was going to be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. <laughs> By the time I was 23, I'd earned my first million. Then, in 10 years, I turned that into 100 million. Boy, in those days, that was a lot of money. Anyway, making money is all I've ever given a dab at. And I might as well tell you, Annie, I was ruthless to the people I had to climb over to get to the top. Because I've always believed one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up if you're not coming back down. <laughs> but I've lately... But I've lately realized something. And no matter how many Rembrandts or Duesenbergs you've got, if you don't have anyone in your life to share it with, if you're alone, well, then you might as well be broke and back in Hell's Kitchen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sure. Good. Kind of. Kind of? I guess not. Damn! I was in Tiffany's yesterday, and, and I picked this up for you. For me? Gee, thanks, Mr. Warbucks. You're so nice to me. I had it engraved. Oh, gee. It's a silver locket, Amy. I noticed that old, worn-out, broken one you always wear, and I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Thank you, Mr. Warbucks. Thank you very much. Yeah, here, we'll just take the old one. No! No! Please don't take my locket off. I don't want a new one. Hey, 
he? Annie, what is it? This locket. My mom and dad left it with me when they left me at the door. And a note, too. They're coming back for me. And I know I'm real lucky being here with you for Christmas and all, but I just don't know how to say it. The one thing I want in all the world more than anything else is to find my mother and father and be like the other kids with folks of my own. <laughs> Annie. Annie, it'll be all right. Uh, I'll help you find them. I'll, I'll help you find your parents. I'll... I'll get her a brandy. It's gonna be all right. Miss Annie, just you see. It
smile. Say, Wacky, who's that who just entered our WEAF studio? Why, it's none other than the wealthy industrialist and Wall Street tycoon, Oliver Wobble! <laughs> now, Oliver Warbox, I understand you have something to tell the folks at home about wonderful little Annie here. Yes. Good evening, Bert Healy. Annie is an 11-year-old foundling who was left on the steps of New York's Municipal Orphanage on the evening of December 31st, 1922. And aren't you now conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents? Yes, Bert Healy. I am now conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents. <laughs> Furthermore, I am offering a $50,000 certified check to anyone who can prove that they are Annie's parents. Wow! Wow! So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, write to Oliver Warbox, care of this station, WEAF New York, or directly to him at... At my home. At my home. At my home, 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. That's 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York! Uh, and I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the makers of all new Oxidant Toothpaste with Miracle L64 to fight bad breath for letting me appear here this evening, and I just did a damn commercial! Grace, I have Good night, night all the world! Of world. Of my life. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, Oliver Warbox. So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, there's $50,000 and a wonderful dog waiting on you. So get in touch right away, you hear? Hey, Mr. Healy! Isn't it time once again for the lovely Boylan Sisters? It most certainly is, Wacky. Well, I see by the old clock on the wall that another of our Thursday night get-togethers has gone by faster than you can say, Oxygen. The toothpaste of the stock. To make your teeth Hollywood bright. So for all the Hour of Smiles family, Ronnie, Bonnie, and Connie, Fred McCracken, and Wackity, and Jimmy Johnson, radio's only mask announcer. Oh, this is Bert Healy saying, ha 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 ha. Hey, ho.
out of here. If you're listening, we've had enough of your 
fireside chats. It's time to criticism, damn it. Nothing but criticism, damn it. I know, I know. It's awful. Has anyone seen the Washington Post this morning? My friends, I've said it before and I shall say it again. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Franklin, you've already been elected president. Every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> You're never fully dressed without a smile. <laughs> Oliver Warbucks and friends, sir. Uh, thank you, Louis. Show them in. Oliver? Oh, uh, Oliver, how good of you to have come. Good morning, Mr. President. And uh, who is this we have here? Mr. President, this is my good friend, Annie. And she so wanted to meet you that I couldn't resist bringing her along. Say hello. Of course, the young lady who sang so beautifully on the radio last night. Andy, this is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Andy? You're just as beautiful as you sounded on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. You're welcome. Well, shall we begin? Oh. Uh, if you'll no, wait outside. No, no, Oliver, let Andy stay. Having a young lady on hand will help keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. I do not want so much as a gosh out of you, Harry. Frank, I'm a child. Now, Oliver, since you speak for the few Americans who seem to have any money left, I'd like to begin with your view on matters. Uh, Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, the business of this country is business. Yes. For the good of you, the country, Wall Street, and me, we have got to get the factories open and the workers back to work. According to my latest figures, there are now 50, mil 50 million uh, Americans out of work and nearly 15 million with no physical means of support. Mr. President, if I may say so, unemployment is not our worst problem. The dispatches from Germany are getting more and more disturbing. There could be war. Germany, help! People are starving in this country. Harold, I know that. But in the long run, if we don't... Dell, for people who are starving, there is no long run. The problem is that everything's happening at once. The stock market's taking a nosedive. Sit-down strikes, riots. Floods, dust storms. And the FBI still hasn't got Al Capone. <laughs> well, at least one thing we're all in agreement. The situation is terrible, and it's only getting worse. Henry, I'd like to see those figures. Just tell them about tomorrow. That's your bottom dollar that... Shh, be quiet, little girl. Harold, what? what were you saying, Annie? No, go ahead. It's still a free country. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow.
sir. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Oh, uh, this isn't for me. It's for you, Oliver, uh, from your secretary in New York. Hundreds of couples jamming street outside of house, all claiming to be Annie's parents. Oh, boy! Have begun to screen them, suggest you return New York at once, sign Grace Farrell. Well, I guess the Hour of Smiles has more listeners than we thought, huh, Annie? She, hundreds of couples, one of them is proud to be my mother and father. Well, I would suppose you'd want to get back to New York immediately. Yes, Mr. President, if you don't mind. Of course. And Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Bye Annie. Bye, Annie. Bye, Mr. President. Thank you. No, thank you, Annie. You're the kind of person a president should have around him these days. Best you could. 
If you can't find them, nobody can. Anyway, I guess a kid can get them all without folks. You didn't turn out so bad. You've got all the juicing birds hanging on the wall and everything. Excuse us, sir. We'll go check on the dinner menu. Any a Duesenberg is, is a car. <laughs> Babe Ruth is the right fielder for the New York Yankees. And, and there's something else you should know. I've made me a fortune, a fortune made ten. Annie, 
I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no? <laughs> well, I guess if I can't have my real mother and father, there's no one in the world I'd rather have for a father than you, Mr. Warbucks. <laughs> Drake. Yes, sir. Call Judge Brandeis and have him come over here and sign those adoption papers. Oh, yes, sir. What <laughs> Grace, tell Mrs. Pugh there'll be a house full of guests. We'll need flowers, flowers. Caviar. caviar, and champagne. Champagne? Oh. I'm fine. <laughs> Annie, this isn't going to just be an adoption party. This is going to be a celebration, and you can have anyone in the world you want to come to. Who would you like? Babe Ruth, Johnny Rockefeller, Madam Chiang Kai-shek. She's a lot of fun. Well, They're going to be the guests at Annie's adoption party. Yes, sir. I know what you're thinking. Oh, and I want the kids. It'll be far past their bedtime. But I'll tell you what. We'll have everyone from the orphanage over here tomorrow for a big Christmas party. Miss Hannigan, too. Miss Hannigan, too. Why not?
again. The adoption procedure is very simple. According to the laws of the state of New York, so what we have, sir, what? Excuse us, folks. We don't mean to enter. Surely, there's our Annie. Who are you? Honey, we're your mom and dad. Mudge. Mudge is the name. Ralph Mudge. And this here's the wife, Shirley. You never knew it, dear, but you're Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? We was sick and broke, honey, and we didn't know which way to turn. And a man gave us a chance to work on his car up in Canada. But we couldn't bring along no baby. No, we loved you, Annie, but we had to leave you behind. Mr. Mudge, is it? We've talked to a great deal of people who have claimed to be Annie's parents. Oh, proof! Like proof. I expect to be wanting some proof of who we are. Um, here are our driver's licenses. And this is Annie's birth certificate. Baby girl, Anne Elizabeth Mudge, born to Ralph and Shirley Mudge, New York, New York, October 28, 1922. October 28, that's my birthday. It was in her note, sir. Yes, I... Mr. Please, you, you gotta believe us. We come in on a Greyhound this afternoon and went straight to the orphanage to fetch our Annie. And the lady there said that our baby was up here. Oh, Annie, all the years I've dreamed of holding you in my arms again. Mr. Mudge, on the night that Annie was left at the orphanage, there was something oh, else. Oh, now here's happened. something you wouldn't know about. Uh, when we left Annie at the orphanage, we gave her half of a silver locket, and then we kept the other half. So that. Brad, so look! Annie's wearing it! And here's the part we kept. <gasps> yes, fits perfectly. Oh, thank God, Ralph. She's our Annie. She is. She is. She. She seems to be. Well, if you be getting Annie's things together, we'll be taking her along. Take her? No. Just a moment, Mr. Budge. What about the money? Money? Well, we ain't got much, but we'd be glad to give you whatever. You haven't heard that I'm offering a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove they are Annie's parents? No. No, we, we don't know nothing about no check. Anyway, we don't want no money. Right, we don't want no money for Annie. On the other hand, Cheryl, remember that pig farm out in New Jersey? With $50,000, we could afford to buy it. Bring Annie up right in the country. Fresh air, fresh eggs, fresh ham. <laughs> fresh ham. Certified, huh? So all I have to do is make it out to myself? Yes. That's correct. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes, you wouldn't mind if Annie stayed until tomorrow morning. And then you can come back and pick up Annie and the check. Oh. Oh. Pro. No. Uh, whatever you prefer, sir. So I think we should be getting back to our hotel. Bye, Annie. Until tomorrow. And you'll be spending the rest of your life with us. Bye, Annie. Uh, well. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Season's greetings, one and all. Well, this is wonderful news. Wonderful. Wonderful. And he has found her parents, and they seem to be a very nice couple. Yes. Very nice. You're lucky, Annie. Yes, very lucky. Just think, a pig farm. <laughs> Mrs. Greer, Mrs. Pugh, champagne. We must celebrate because it's Christmas Eve and we've just had the most wonderful news. Annie has found her mother and father. Everyone, everyone, I propose a toast to Annie Mudge. To Annie Mudge. Annie, Annie. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I seem to have the same effect on everyone. <laughs> is not.
not who he says he is. Mr. President, Frank, Frank, Franklin, I need your help. Of course, Oliver, whatever you need. Show it to the 
president. Excuse me, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Mudge. Show them it, With pleasure, sir. It's Frank. Frank. Franklin, shall I have them call for your car? Uh, no, no, Eleanor can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you come in, please, Mr. and Mrs. Mudge? Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. And Merry Christmas, one and all. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry, 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 Thank Merry, you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Look, sure. there's our little girl. Your little girl. Hi. We don't want to bother you on, on Christmas and all. We just come to pick up Annie. Uh, her suitcase? Uh, allow me. Oh, uh, uh, and the check. Check. Of course, I almost forgot. Here it is. Fifty thousand dollars. Certified. 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 Paid to the order of Ralph Mudge. Read it again. Hey, to the order of the jig is up. <laughs> yes, the jig is up. Daniel Francis Hannigan, also known as Brewster Hannigan, also known as Ralph Mudge, also known as Danny the Dick. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Franklin, I believe that fraud is a federal offense, and that your Secret Service men have the power to arrest. They certainly do. Great. Would you turn them over, please? Yes, sir. Windows. 